for 7 p.m. Special permit for less than 30 foot tall expansion at 57 to 59 Center Street, marked after map ID 31B 267, uh, as advertised on. Um. <coughs> for John and Paul Serio. John's a lawyer in Boston, and um, they, neither of them are here tonight, so I'm presenting it. Um, they own this building, two buildings. So it's two buildings on one lot. Let me get this thing to work. Um, so they own that red house and the house that Circa's in. So I think they've owned it for many, many years. And Circa, the restaurant there, is gone. The red house used to be a multi-family house. And it's been pretty much vacant for a year or so. And it's mostly gutted inside. Um, they started taking it apart a little bit so we could look at the structure and figure out how we were going to shore up a very understructured building. So the project's kind of grown over time. The reason we went to central business uh, early on was because we were almost ready to go with the project in its form at that time, but then we decided to wait until the rear setback, the elimination of the rear setback was passed to, to come before you. So, so that's why it's taken so long as we were waiting for that setback change to happen so that we could then work on a project that went all, all the way to the back property line. I mean, we're 12 inches off the back property line. But, um, so it's two buildings on one lot. Um, the Circa building is uh, 1,355 square feet, and the Red House, the part that it, well, the Red House is uh, 970 square feet. And the back part of the Red House is, um, is really, really in bad shape. It was a bad addition back here. Um, we're going to knock that down. We're just going to save the front part of the, of the building. This is um, Center Street right there. This is the backyard right there, Circa right up on the property line that's a concrete block building and the red house is a really nice house that once had great victorian characters kind of a uh, sort of gothic victorian house uh, this is the same plan the colors these are all color coded so i think this one shows uh what's what's going to stay and what's going to go away but and then this is the proposed basement plan let me just okay so this is the proposed plan so Center Street right there, that's the Circa building in light gray. This light gray part right here is what we're keeping of the red house. The back part, like I said, is so, the structure is so bad, the foundation is just totally shot that we pretty much have to knock it down. So we're planning on uh, building this section right here as a structure that will be in the same vein as this part of the structure, the red house. Then we're going to build um, a flat roof area right in here and right there that is the same height as the Circa building. And then it's going to have this interior courtyard that's open to the air. So you won't really see that from the street. This will be, this part right here will be very glassy. This is all outdoor seating. Um, but it, it's conceived to be as one single project. It could be broken up into two different uses. This could be one side, it could be... There's no tenant for the, the project yet. The, the, the hope is that it will be one restaurant tenant who takes the whole thing, and this will be dining, this will be kitchen, there will be bathrooms right here, this will be storage, this will be a bar, this will be dining. You'll enter right here, and this will be an outdoor seating area here. 
but it could still be broken up into two separate tenants. We don't know. We're taking um, the red house. The floor level was a couple of feet above ground. We have to cut the whole floor out and drop it down so that it's handicap accessible. So um, the grade here, you'll, if you're in a wheelchair or, or whatever, you can just roll right up into there at grade and come into, this is all going to be the same floor level here, so it's fully handicap accessible. So we're dropping the grade of the um, red house down. That's the roof plan, so you can kind of see that's going to be flat roof. That is flat roof. That will be flat roof. That's open to the air. This is the red house with the gable roof. We're adding a little dormer to it right here. And then this is an addition to the red house, which is a gable roof as well. Uh, it's a side elevation. Boy, the graphics really got wacky here. It looks like it's built out of brick. They probably, these are, those are supposed to be clabberts, and they look like giant concrete blocks. <laughs> It's really strange. Um, so you can kind of see here, that's the Circa building. That's the Red House. We're, we're going to totally redo the um, front of the Red House. So this is a rendering of it. And so the Red House gets pretty much a facelift. Go back to, uh, if I can go back. Where to go? You can see it. it's just got these three windows up there and it's all clabber. It used to have a porch right there and it's got this little sort of condition bad porch. So we're going to redo all those windows in the front and um, create this big glassy facade that has a big crown molding on top of it and then the three windows on top, uh, shingles up there to keep the Victorian look. Um, but this this molding here, you can see it there, is what ties the, all three structures together. So I'm um, going to create a big molding around those front windows, and then it goes across. And, sorry, this thing keeps going up. It's my um, laser tape, and that's why it keeps. It's not real. So that's our addition right there that we're adding. And that is designed to try to tie these two parts of the structure together along with this long horizontal crown, big crown molding that has a real historic feel to it. So we're trying to keep the historic look of the building and then use an architectural element to tie the two pieces together. And you can see it's got that front patio there. Um, the entrance, like I said, is in the middle. And, um, and then the circuit building will be, um, we'll take the glass and redo it and make it a little bit more historic looking. And then you can see this is the height of the, um, the pink house next to it, the Italianate Gothic house, which is a really nice house. And so what I'm here for is um, we are proposing an addition here that's lower than the, half the, the height of the standard required in the downtown district, central to business. It's only going to be about 12 feet high, and the requirement is 31 feet high, I think. And, um, the reason we don't want to build a 31 foot tall structure is because we'd like to try to keep this building to be the dominant structure and the most, the strongest character defining structure on the site. We really want to dress that piece of that building up and bring it back to its kind of residential feel, but it's going to be a little bit more open for retail use. And we don't want the other structures to be competing with that really nice building. Um, and we'd like to take elements, like I said, the horizontal band, and extend those out to um, create uh, subservient additions to this red house. It's not going to be red anymore. So we, that's our, our plan, is to try to keep our new addition lower, tied into the existing architecture, and not make it overwhelming or overpowering to the existing architecture. Um, I just feel like it would be a very totally different project if we had to build a 30-foot high addition. We, it would be very difficult to marry it into the gable roof of the red house there. We'd be ripping off the side of that roof, with, and it would just be very ugly um, if we tried to glom it onto the side of the red house. The only real option to make it look good would be to total, rip the roof of the red house off, like I said, make it into a completely different structure, probably be a flat roof. 
and, um, and we lose a lot of the character that I think is important in, in this building. Um, those are longer views. And, uh, but if we, if we did build it up to, to the required height, I think we'd be about that height of the neighboring building. And I think this in the King Street, I mean this in the Center Street, um, it becomes a little more residential. It becomes a little smaller scale. I know the police station is going to really uh, change the scale of that street because it's a much bigger building. But I think as you get closer to State Street, scale should be allowed to stay a little bit smaller because you're <coughs> transitioning into a residential neighborhood. And then also behind this building are houses. Um, and it's pretty much surrounded by houses. So I hate to see a big, tall building built there with a flat roof that um, lost all of its character. So, so that's, that's the main oops, reason we are here tonight, is to get approval for that lowest structure. Sorry, did you check? Is this the city council meeting? It's not. It's no, planning board. Okay, and that's next week. May I just ask if it's next week? Yeah. Next Tuesday? Thursday. For some reason, I don't think she's talking about. And may I just ask one last question? The elections for the city councilors and the mayor are on the same day, or they're not? No. November? No, November 8th. 8th. 8th for the city councilor? Everybody. Okay, everybody. Everybody. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, any questions for the applicant? Yeah. Uh, I mean, overall, I, I agree with your, your ideas here, but uh, what's actually happening in the upper floor of the of the Red House? Is that just going to be open? Or? Yes. So that's just going to be a high space yeah. over the bar area or, yeah. and so on? Um, the part that we're adding in the back, um, back in, um, back there, there is dining space under that. We could, there's certain, there's a part in the very back where we're going to drop the ceiling and I think we can, we could have a little loft space or a little storage space, but it may end up just being mechanical equipment. But there's no second floor um, living or working space at all. Right, so that's just light in over the bar. Yeah. That's right. And there was another um, thing that I forgot to talk about was um, since the kitchen, this is a circa building, the kitchen's going to be right in here. So we're going to, I didn't show it, but we're going to have a hood exhaust probably right in here. <laughs> that, that is representative of um, a rooftop um, um, air handling unit. It'll be heating and air conditioning. And we're going to have a hood exhaust that comes up out of this flat roof now. And, I was talking to Peter and Jack. Peter and Jack earlier because you said you you own that house right there, right? Mm -hmm. So they had a concern about where is the hood exhaust going to com come from, and I don't know exactly right now, but I do know that it's probably going to be above the kitchen space because that's the kitchen space right there. Um, the like I said, we don't have a a tenant for the space yet. Um, so, you know, the, the final restaurant layout is really of my own making. I don't have a real restaurant client that I'm working with yet. I've designed a whole bunch of restaurants, so I kind of know the general lay of the land, but this is my projected use of the interior, and this is what I'm thinking, since they already have a kitchen right back there that will probably keep the kitchen back there, and that's where the hood exhaust would come up. So they were asking me, what height is it going to be? Like I said, it's about 12 feet high. If I, the, the goal in, is for all the mechanical equipment to be in the back because um, I think the prime directive that I understand is that the mechanical equipment not be visible from the street. I know that the um, central business district people are, are very concerned about that. So um, that's, that's what our about the location of the dumpster? We won't have one. It'll be daily takeout. So we have a trash room in the back. So um, this just we're building to the limits. Um, I mean, this house here is right up on the property line. That's right up on the property line. There's no, since we're building, we're infilling this area back in here to that property line. 
that would be where the dumpster could be. Right now, the trash is back in here and it comes out the middle. As soon as we close up the middle here, anything that's back here, the only way out is through the little shared alleyway right here that the Sirios own. So trash is really going to come out on a daily basis. It's not going to be a dumpster. So you're going to store it inside? Correct. So you, every day you're going to have to what, wheel it out to the curb? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, there'll have to be a service that comes every day to take it away. So we have a little designated trash room right there. And we do, we're, we're proposing um, to build a basement. So this is a basement plan. So there's the red house, it's just on a crawl space. There's the inner courtyard, it's just a slab on grade. That's the entry, a slab on grade. And then this is gonna be a full basement, two stairs in it, that will allow them to have a prep kitchen um, and some storage space. and. They probably won't store their trash down there. They can store their liquor down there and that kind of thing. The rear of the red building that you've got to rebuild, is it going to look essentially the same when you're done? Yes. Um, same roof line? We're going to drop, step that roof down. We're stepping it down just a little bit here. What they stepped down before. I mean, yeah, it did step down a little bit, yeah. Yeah, so, but again, to try to keep this as the prime nice character defining element and then step this down and that's a little less. Well, when, I, when I went by there a couple of days ago, the back was totally open. The building, you can walk into it. Oh, and the door or the wall? There's no door. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's no floors. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just thought maybe it ought to be buttoned up a little bit yeah. to keep the neighbor kids out of it or something. I, I agree. Uh, when you rebuild, when you lower the, you're essentially going to lower the floor yep. in there. You're not going to change the outside at all, or right. chop the foundation out, or anything like that. We we're going to have to rebuild a lot of the foundation wall. Um, but you're not going to change the overall height of the building. No. Um, it's hard to, I guess. Um, the foundation is one of the most complicated parts of the whole thing. Uh, so we're keeping. The foundation wall we're keeping is that bit right there. Because, and that's a brick foundation wall. And then we're going to build a concrete foundation wall on the inside of that to support our new floor on. But that's the only part that's really salvageable. Anything along here, we have to build new so that our new stuff can tie into it. And anything back here just was in such bad shape it didn't make any sense to keep it. On the windows, I, I mean, I have a there's no entrance here in the front of the red building? Yes, right there is a door. Which one? That oh, one okay. right there. Same place the other one is. Uh, Essentially. Kinda, yeah. Yeah, okay. It wasn't clear from the... Yeah, that, see, that's a door. It, I mean, th these have probably been a little bit updated. Possibly. Well, no, I guess they haven't. You got what we... the latest plans. So center door right there in the middle edition, and then a little door right there. Um, so that the red house, you know, could become an independent structure at one time. I mean, if, if along down the road, if they wanted to. So the the you go to the, the overhead the seating chart. Yeah. The plan. Yeah. Um, so that this outdoor patio that's actually behind a facade. Yeah. No roof. Correct. So water. Because the, the, the roof of the, the red house is just going to yeah. drain right in. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have to have a, a drain in that floor. All of our, and, and you know, all these flat roofs back here, um, get the roof plan. They, they all have the same condition. This flat roof right here has got a, it's going to drain to two, uh, one or two or three center drains right here. Those drains go down through interior walls and they'll tie into underground pipes that, t that go out to the street to the storm drainage. There's no, does TPW have to wait on the windows? Because the disturbance is less than they can? They don't have to do a separate permit, but they have to get tie-in permits. So you have to do that. Oh, okay, so there's still... Tie-in city drains. <laughs> okay, so DPW will have to look at... Yeah. Are that 
advantage of a residential area, so I, can you speak to anything about what is happening on that back lot line? Or you, I don't know. Okay. But that's not residential per se. I mean, that's mixed use. There's off there are offices that are there. That's that little street. Center court. Center court, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, so I think about where all of a sudden whoever is on the other side of that fence is going to find a building all the way to the edge and they're going to find mechanical things hidden from the front, which, right. and, and so I just, I, yeah. that's the only concern I have for it. I, I like the design a lot. Thanks. Well, another question to the applicant, because I think there's some people here who want to speak to the Mark? Are there any comments from the architectural the, the review board on? I know they approved it. They yeah, I mean, the only, no, and they really liked the project. They um, felt like it was going to add a lot to the, that end of um, um, Center Street. The only, and I think Tom's probably already addressed them. The one concern they had was to tie in the both the middle addition uh, with the two buildings and the banding is um, what Tom referred to was important for them to sort of tie those three pieces together. And then there was a discussion about windows and the options of trading out one of the front windows on the formerly Circa restaurant to potentially a door, I think, that you had mentioned previously in case that became oh, retail. Oh, right. Yeah, if that wants And all of that is, is really just sort of detail for, for review. So that's an option that was left on the table, I think, as well, just to allow flexibility. Yeah. Um, but overall, you know, they, they really didn't have... Um, I mean, there was a permit with conditions, but also discussed sort of tying those elements together. Right, because so they're taking the door, the existing door at Circa is going away. Right, but there was also sort of the option on the table to leave um, the ability to put a door back in if they yeah. wanted to in the future. So in case, um, in the future, this could be one tenant, that could be one tenant, that could be a common entry. And this tenant would need a door probably right there, so they, they allowed us to... Entry. Um, it's my bike rack. Bike rack is actually not shown right here. It's on the plan, but it's, it's on the plan. Right it's not on the <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to maximize our savings. <laughs> um, so, any other questions for the applicant? We will we'll, we'll, we'll leave the public hearing open so we can still ask questions. So, we'll see if, if anybody you next time. Okay. See if anybody else has a question. So, just if you'd like to make a statement, just come on up to the podium, state your name and address, and um, have you say? Yes, I'm Peter Teitelman, and I'm a co-owner of 53 Center Street with Jack LaFort. And, um, you know, the design looks quite nice. One of the concerns, and we asked, as Tom said, was this exhaust. And um, I don't know exactly what the answer is, but the Circa, I think that Tom said, would be 12 feet high? 14. 14. And, of course, we have a two-story uh, office building next door and just, you know, we'd love to have the exhaust be higher so that uh, the exhaust wouldn't come into our building or uh, be directly visible to it. That would involve probably a higher pipe or something to move it out. Then the question is, I guess, visibility from the front, but perhaps if the pipe could be curved in some direction or, or somewhat higher, it would be good. Granted. There are buildings in the back, but there's a big court. In center court, um, perhaps the exhaust could go towards the center of it with some angle. And then on the left, behind our building, is another um, psychotherapy building. There's also a lawyer's office back there. So anyway, our interest about the exhaust is to not have it um, you know, be right in our face for health reasons. and. Uh, aesthetic reasons. That's one thing that we wanted to bring up. Another is um, on the side of... Can I just jump in? Where does Circus exhaust go, or where did it go? I mean, if that's where the kitchen was. We should know that. I think, I think it's in back. It is in the back of the, about uh, two-thirds to maybe three-quarters from the street currently. It's at eye level now, right? Does it come out of the side of the building? Is it in the back? I can't remember. Or is it on our side of the side next to ours? Uh, maybe, maybe both. I think there's two. That's right. I think there is one on the side and one in back on the roof. There's on one on the side facing your building. No, facing the other building. Facing the, uh, the red building. 
the what's now a driveway. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so um, one thing that's a little different, if I heard it right, is that the back of Circa, uh, well, no, I guess it won't be any shorter. It seemed like that the... Want me to go back to the... Yeah, that the, op that the space directly behind will be closer to our building. It won't, won't extend as far back. And that would also add to a little bit of the concern about it. So where you have, let's see, on the far left, the top two thirds, the blue, yeah, that whole part. Is that? That's new. Is that? Uh, that's brand new. Yeah, that's not any building space. That's like a flat space. Is that right, or is it a building? It's a building. Okay. It's a new building to be the same height as this. Okay, building. that's good because I thought if it was shorter, it would just be the exhaust would be that much closer. So, anyway, the other uh, and Jack has an issue he wants to bring up is the window. Um, on the circuit. Is there going to be any more window than is already there? On, on, on your building side? No. Um, I didn't even know there was a window there, but there's no reason to have any windows in that side. Oh, so maybe you won't even have that one. Okay. There's one. Yeah, we should. I, oh, that, actually, I think there's one. You can see the you show one being filled in. Huh? Yeah, so. And towards right. the front. Right there. Oh, yeah. That yeah. one's blocked up. We'll keep that one there, because that's part of the storefront. And then there's a, maybe that's the one we're talking about that we lock up. Okay. Um, so I, uh, if you're okay, that wasn't an issue for you. Filling in that window wasn't an issue. No, that's better. I mean, it's, the window hasn't been a real problem anyway, but filling in is just that much better. Oh, okay. uh, my name is Jack Ford. Uh, as Peter mentioned, uh, I co-own the building to the right of what currently is the Circa building. Um, a concern that I have is about parking in the neighborhood. Uh, for instance, wondering what the capacity of this restaurant is. Oh. How many people is it going to, you know, draw? It's going to be what it was. Yeah, the, the thing is, remember, this is, some, this is central business. There's no parking requirements. Oh, I see. Uh, I see. Anything you want in downtown, and we don't require you to have parking. I see. Okay. Even the fact that there's some spaces that are going to be lost, that that's not an issue? No. Um, this is more directed uh, to the architecture committee, and that is, uh, you know, I assume that the Circa building has already been grandfathered in, uh, but its position is right to the sidewalk, and I was actually hoping with this new plan that it would be set back to, to kind of meet the line, the current line of the other buildings on the street. Yes. 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 It's not really so much an architecture. I mean, it's a zoning question. Uh -huh. and a zero setback. We have a maximum five foot uh -huh. middle two line. So mm -hmm. um, the idea is really to build as much as possible up to the sidewalk. To the um, so in fact, it's consistent with the zoning, and there wouldn't be any sort of grandfathering because it meets the current zoning. I see. Well, I well, think it's that my own opinion aesthetically. When I first saw the building, it seemed very odd and very out of place in that neighborhood. That was like 20-something years ago. And I understand that it was originally used as a motel, like back in the 50s. And then, you know, later it was used as a beauty parlor and so on. So it's kind of an odd structure. It was an appliance store for years. Oh, appliance store. Okay. But just so, so you know, so downtown, our goal... So the goal of the zoning of downtown is to get the building right up to the sidewalk. So the fact that you have a little yard in front of yours. Yes. So if somebody ripped that down. Yes. If you guys decide you want to put a building there and just want to yeah. knock the one you have there, yeah. we can make you build it up to the sidewalk. I see. How does that fit, though, with the historical character of the neighborhood? Well, I mean, a lot of it's organic. You know, it, it fluctuates. Not every building is the same. Some, and then also the, the central core has expanded over time as well to sort mm -hmm. of allow a sort of infill of that. And so you'll get some variation in that regard between sort of the what's referred to as transitional residential structures mm -hmm. versus more commercial buildings. Well, so our new addition is actually set back further than the zoning allows, I guess. So. But you have a building. So we're not going to make it tear down your building. Right, but that's also well, part I mean, of the special permit is sort right, of. Right. But yeah. I mean our newest addition right in the middle that's non-conforming as well. 
Right, but you, the planning board can grant a special permit for that too, which I think is advertises that it's this lower height and setback. Okay. But it's the same thing is that, um, you know, you're adding, you're filling in a space, you're not building brand new with a blank spot, you know, blank uh, slate. Okay. I mean, those are my main concerns. I think that overall, it's a great improvement to what's there, and I think this has a lot of potential. But I guess my disappointment is, you know, in terms of the facade not changing, because I think that it could have been much more attractive to the whole part of the street, you know, if if it was handled differently. So thank you for hearing me. And playing off what Jack said, actually, there's, there may be an advantage for us because sound will be blocked off from people that are sitting outside having it that high, but maybe the facade could have a little uh, aesthetic nature that's different than it is, whether it's slightly rounded or something that would handle a little bit about what Jack was saying, well, uh, not completely. I guess it, it's, I, I know I, I will never have any success asking my client to take away square footage. I guess our, our goal, what I, the hope is, is that we add some architectural detail to, mm -hmm. to that hideous block. <laughs> Make it look a little bit better because it does kind of look yeah. like a garage. And, yeah. yeah, it definitely mm -hmm. does. I completely agree with mm -hmm. you. And it's totally out of keeping mm -hmm. next to your really beautiful Italian house. What about wood? Um, <laughs> uh, wood? Well, actually, I have to, I have to talk to like, the Central Business Architectural Committee uh, has, we don't have any jurisdiction of what the building looks like. Mm -hmm. so that's what the Central Business Architectural Committee does. So if you guys want to have a conversation yeah. outside of here and talk about what the front should look like in terms of wood and treatment, mm -hmm. that's fine. But we, we don't have any authority over that. I see. So, okay, thank you. I was just about to ask if we had any authority over what it looks like. <laughs> no, that's what, this is, the Central Business Architectural Committee, that's their purview. That's what I thought. So, we can, talk about, we can talk about your things. position, your, your question about traffic, I mean about the parking, yes, that's yeah. us. About um, the setback, yes, that's us. Mm -hmm. But um, central business, downtown is a special district, unlike almost any other part of the city. There's one or two other historic districts, but central business architecture for this part of Northampton, downtown has purview over the look. So, but you guys are more than willing uh, but I think if they decide to change it, they have to go back and forth. Some of it. Yeah. So if you decide to make substantive changes to the front of it now that they've already approved it, mm -hmm. you have to go tell them. Well, they well, would have I, to I, I, I have oh, a question. Price. What's the role of the architecture committee? What's that? What is the role of the architecture committee in a project like this? Well, they evaluate the design to make sure it's consistent with the, the guidelines that are adopted. They met in May and had a public hearing, I think it was May or June had a public hearing on the facade changes. So it's very similar. We did, uh, remember with um, the, 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 the bakery? Hungry Ghost. Hungry Ghost. Oh, yeah. So when Hungry Ghost came for their permit, we actually, uh, I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, I'm not sure if you were here for it, but usually we meet, meet at the same time. We meet with the Central Business Architectural Committee. Mm -hmm. So for that particular project, we were all here at the same time. This one, we're just meeting separately. So. But if you guys do decide, as mm -hmm. Carolyn said, if, if, if you come together and you make mm -hmm. some decisions you want to make about changing the facade, then they have to go back in front of file an amendment with the Central Business Architecture mm -hmm. Committee. So there's nothing to stop them from having any conversations about this. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, but it's just not us. I so. see. Okay, thank you. Yep. But the blower is us. <laughs> <laughs> blower is well, us. Well, keep that in mind. Yeah. Well, potentially, I mean, this. It, it, you know, the permit in front of you is for the addition. There's an existing restaurant there. If you took the building and converted to another restaurant, the rest of it could go and file a building permit tomorrow with the building department, and there would be no review by any outside committee because restaurants are allowed in downtown. So, um, you know. well, that's true. But because it's a special permit, we can discuss it. Yeah. You know, it's on the table if yeah. you want to. So, um, so any, other, any questions? Um, so I guess, yeah, the only um, question, do we want to pursue the blower? I mean, the blower, they're putting, you don't really have the design for where the blower is going to go. I think what they're asking is, I'm not sure how, how well you can direct them, but 
You can run them horizontally for a distance. Um, so, um, um, so the kitchen is right in here. The hood will probably be on that wall there. And I was, we're trying to remember where the hood pokes out now. Does it stick out of the wall right there? Is I think they're saying it sticks out of the driveway. So. Oh, yeah. right in here? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So what we can do is, if the hood is here, we can run the ductwork over across to a location more centralized right here. Um, we have to, by code, stay either five or ten feet away from the, the, that guy, the air handling unit. So if we were right in here, and then not quite high enough for it to be visible from out here, that, that, that might work. If the closer we get to this roof, the higher it has to be, and the more visible it is from out here. But but that's that's not a big deal is to run it horizontally over to here. I know they're going to want to run straight up there, but I think if we have a good enough, um, you know, um, reason and trying to be nice neighbors, that mm -hmm. we could run it horizontally. Mm -hmm. that would be but do you think that competing interest? I mean, you're wanting next door, you're wanting it to be up high enough so that you don't notice the exhaust, and yet there will be people in town wanting it low enough that they don't see it. And, uh, well, I think a good solution is to run it horizontal, yeah. where it's more in the middle of the building, so it's away from their building. Right. And so it won't be. Well, well and then Catherine's comment that, Karen's comment that it could be, uh, you know, a restaurant could go in there right now and use, you know, put it, put it where they wanted to. But, but, but that's that's one of the good things about a special permit. So once they once anybody applies for a special permit, we have a lot more freedom in what we can do. If it was just a site plan, then we probably couldn't even have this conversation. But because it is a special permit, it does open it up for us to have a little bit more input. And I think it's you know it's a valid request. It's an mm -hmm. office building next to a restaurant, especially if they can get it over towards the center of the building. Was this brought up with the central architecture that it can't be seen no matter where it is or what um, configuration is that it? We put it in our renderings, and it was just not visible at all. And um, I think it's. They did talk about it. you did bring, raise it up at the hearing. It would be in the back, and it wouldn't be. I mean, yeah, it seems like no matter what, you can't see it. Right. So if you just suck it up, straight up like a you know, telephone pole to get it to get the exhaust high enough, but then you'd see it from Center Street, which would, I would imagine, be contrary to what the central architecture wants to see. Yeah, we're, we were trying to. I think show the biggest thing with the air handling unit is probably more obtrusive than yeah. an exhaust fan. I don't know. But They're right. like, you know, about four and a half feet tall, and it's a big giant. That's for air conditioning or heating? Both. Oh, both. Mm -hmm. One unit for both. Yes. Yeah, I know when Seth Jolly, you know, he, the house behind the fire station, he built his house, that that big three-story. Oh yes. of, I mean, mm -hmm. he built it behind Fly by Night which used to be the paint store for a while. Oh, yeah. And then Fly By Night built that addition there, and then they put their gigantic air handling unit like 10 feet away from his living room window. And he was not too happy with it. He, he, now it doesn't bother him quite so much, but it was a, a big change for him. So. Mm -hmm. Now he put the building on the market. He's dying to buy. Yes. <laughs> Tom, did you consider putting, you, you sort of, talked vaguely about the second floor rear of the red house. Yeah. That it could be a second floor. Would you consider putting the air handling unit in there? Um, I don't know. It's one of those budgetary issues where it's a lot less expensive to buy a unit that sits on a flat roof than putting it inside. Yeah, you know, I don't want to go too crazy with that because, you know, I, I do agree with Carol. It wasn't for the site plan. Right? Especially for what we didn't even talk about it. But, so, I'm I think, for my own right, but I think if, if he's willing to, you know, put in a horizontal uh, conduit or whatever it would be to, to move the vent away from the property, I think that's more than fair. Yeah, we can, we can definitely get it right in the middle, right back in there. Right. Right. That's a good place. Right. 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 We'll put that as a condition. Yeah. But I don't want to start being architect by moving the, no. that area. It's not the air handler, it's the hood. It's the uh, hood exhaust. The, the hood exhaust. exhaust. That's what I'm saying. It's the hood. It's not the air Although I actually was asking about the air handler because 
you said that was the bigger item. Right. It was a curiosity. No, no, I don't. Yes, but by the time where it's set, it's you know, 25, 30 feet back, so you, you never see it from the street level. I'm sorry, did you get, did somebody work this point here? Uh, no. Well, I, I was just going to say, if it's in the center, it would be more uh, room to circulate anyway. It might be better. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's the more, airflow. Right. So we're only talking about the hood. I think. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. All right. So we're going to put a condition on it that they, they uh, move the hood over. Well, not move the hood, but the hood take exhaust. Off. To take the exhaust. To the metal of the stuff. Any other questions or comments? Uh, should we move to close the public hearing? I don't know. Okay. All in favor? All right. Thank you. Um, any comments or questions from the board? We really only have one. Oh, wait. I just wanted to tell you that um, DPW had a couple of comments. Um, granite curb corners removed from the curb cut should be returned to DPW. The applicant shall install vertical granite curb to match the existing across the closed cut. Thank you very much. Okay. Tom, did you hear the comments from the DPW? No. Uh, they That's what I handed to you before. Oh, I didn't read it. Right. They want the, 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 the pieces of granite, the, the, the curved pieces of granite, you return those to the DPW when you wouldn't fill the driveway. Okay. Don't take them. Apparently, yes, people take yeah, walk offs. <laughs> <laughs> That's so expensive. <laughs> well, in fact, I think every permit we do, every time we close a curb, the DPW oh, wants the curved pieces. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, that's, that brings up another question. I'm oh, sorry, Tom, but we closed the hearing. Sorry. Can I ask you a question? Uh, after the hearing, after. Well, uh, well, this is a follow-up to the question that you just asked me. That it's tied to the question you just asked me. Do we have to remove that curb cut? Yes. Because when we did the fire station, there was a curb cut that we didn't remove. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they're going to require you to close it. Yeah. I can't imagine any way they'd let you do that. Yeah. Okay. So. All right, so we'll do access from the screen. Could be handicap access from the screen. No. Carol, so we've got the closing grant. And the sidewalk. Any new sidewalk has to be installed according to DW standards. your motion get a second and then we can okay we will second motion second all right well, what's the comment Chris? we shouldn't require that you put it right in the center it has to have some wiggle room in there to allow or otherwise they're having to come back if it won't work out for some reason or other we i mean you could um you could just indicate that the um hood exhaust has to be horizontally directed towards the middle of the property as opposed to, you know, and away from the abutting parcel. So, I think the, the spirit of what we discussed with, when the abutters were here was that there was going to be some kind of, yeah, you know, not just aiming it towards the yeah, center. He might come up with some other. 
Right, I just don't want to create an instance where if it's not right in the center, that there's the, the, the well, butters are going to say, well, you didn't do it. We originally thought, I mean. That's not how I heard it. How did you? That it had to be right in the center. I mean, I think the spirit is that it's a way from the abutting and personal. Right. Until all the middle. The way to do it. To make sense possible to plug the middle. Right. Yeah. Okay, so you want to read the condition? Um, uh, hood exhaust should be directed horizontally toward the middle of the property and away from the abutting parcel. Are people comfortable with that? No. Yeah. Yeah. Removes the requirement. Of the so. Any other discussion on this one? All in favor? All right. Good luck. Thanks. 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 I thought it was a mystery. They just like one day they just closed. Yeah, yeah. yeah it wouldn't be the end of the year. Yeah. Really? What? Oh. Well, the different ownership. Yeah. They switched ownership. Oh, they recently before the change? A couple years, probably. Yeah. I don't think they were ever. I never saw anyone. I just like. But it was, it was only open. It was only really set. Yeah. Well, it was only the same year. Well, it's like the place that's celebrating its 20th anniversary, you know, the place next to your store. Mm -hmm. Oh, Bella. Bella. Bella's here. That's good. Because there's somebody talking about vegetarian. Oh, God. Really? I used to have to go there. That was one of the few places my friends would be. It was packed all the time. Yeah, he's got a little. Packed. You didn't go to Pete? I was there. I was there. I was there. Are you talking about Bella? Oh. Show me. Yeah, we have um, one continuation we have to do. Um, so here, I'd like to open up a continuation of Kensington Estate Definitive Subdivision Schedule for 7:30. The applicant has requested an additional continuance to the summer eight meeting. Now, was there a clock on this? Did they have to come to us? A certain time where they can keep extending as they long can as keep extending. I mean as long as they write a request for extension. As long as we grant it. As long as we grant. So there's no <laughs> 90 days, six months, anything like that. They're not on a clock. They are on a clock. But every time they extend it, it extends the clock. So as we need to we make agree. sure right. And the, the issue is if they don't request an extension or we don't grant it, they can get a, a permit by default essentially. Um, so it's really, um, you know, that the, the flexibility goes toward the applicant in that regard. So you can get a, um, you know, a, a permit. Uh, and in fact, that just happened in East Hampton, if you all remember reading in the paper, the Valley CDC project, they said they didn't grant um, an extension to review the permit and issue a decision within the period of time under state statute. And so um, they got a constructive grant of a permit, essentially, and they're holding that over the heads of the town. So it's not that they can't get the permit, it's that they automatically can get it. Yeah. Wow, I would thought it was the other way around. And to no one feel your oath and deny the permit, deny the extension. Oh, right, that's like a backdoor way of denying the right, permit. Right, right, right. Um, the only concern I have is that this gets delayed, delayed, delayed to say February. And we all want to do a site visit out there. Right. And it's, if it's the middle of February, we can't see. You know, we won't get a very good, if there's you know, two feet of snow on the ground. Well, you could do, you know, I'm not, I don't think the layout of the road is going to change that dramatically. So if you wanted to do a scheduled site visit now and the leaves are down, you can for more than two inches. Well, there was an issue about moisture, too, and so forth, which right. you're not going to see in February. Right. Maybe we should do it yeah. in the next month before. I already done about three or four sites. Because you know, you've been looking at this. I mean, these guys originally came to us in the 80s? So you're 90s. 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 Mm -hmm. So they've been coming back and forth for a long time. So, but Except for Frandy, <laughs> most of us haven't been here that long. <laughs> so, I have been here since the 90s. Okay. So maybe um, 
I'll send an email to people and we can try to figure out. Maybe it's like take an hour on a Sunday yeah. uh, after Halloween and uh, take a walk through. I think the other issue was, you know, it was so overgrown in the summer and so wet. And I think you all were hoping for it to dry out. It doesn't really dry out that much, but at least the leaves are coming back. So. I was down there and it was out there and it was like being in a maze, actually. Yeah. Well, who, uh, do you want the property much? Uh, not the entire thing. Um, but yeah, the schedule's on the we'll probably have to do it on the public area. Yep. We'll probably have to do it on a weekend now that it's dark. That's what I mean, do we, yeah. like a Sunday or something like that, yeah. do an hour. Yeah. Go out and do it for an hour. Okay. Or else it'll make me So they requested a continuation to December 8th. Um, I know we're going to have at least one other permit that will be coming on, actually, we'll probably have two permits coming for the eighth, plus potentially um, a sub, another subdivision at State Hospital for the eighth. Although they haven't filed yet and we haven't looked at it, so I don't know if they'd be ready for the eighth anyway, so we might have to put them off to January. What does um, that mean? A new subdivision means a new road. Yeah, new road section. They came, do you remember they came before you for preliminary subdivision and then all of a sudden, I think it was right at the public hearing or right before the public hearing, they withdrew? Uh, there was a, yeah, just yeah. before, yeah, it was yeah. a law of some sort. Right. Yeah. So they um, said they've addressed the flaws and they're ready to come back. They haven't filed officially yet, but we just heard today that they're planning on filing so they can get on the December 8th agenda. So that's potentially three projects for December 8th already. Um, so I guess I'm just sort of throwing it out there to strategize about timing if you continue this to the 8th, whether you should put this right up at the front since it's a continuation and neighbors will be there. So you, you want to address them. Because the other projects aren't really quick, simple ones per se. So we, it's not as though we could you know, get those off the docket. Right. Can we, are we meeting on the 22nd? Of what? December. Uh -huh. I wasn't planning to. Well, that's what I'm just throwing out. We don't do two weeks. Typically, December, no. You just have one. Yeah, one. We but we could. Right. Right. We could have a meeting. Wow, friends. Uh, I'll humble. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I humble. I won't be here. Right. That's a case of matters. I won't. I won't be. I'll be in New York. Yeah. I'll, I'll be in San Francisco. Let's celebrate Christmas on Long Island. Doesn't matter. The 22nd, way before Christmas. When is Christmas? Tangent. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so that means we possibly have Kensington subdivision at the Hospital Hill. What was the third one? And then um, a site plan in the industrial park and a special permit in Florence. And oh, we can't do any of these in November? No. And can, we, can we push any of them in January? Well, the subdivision from the state hospital is my guess is that they probably won't be ready to go. Okay. I would try to push them at least because okay. I can't imagine um, the subdivision, you know, the state hospital that takes, that's a long meeting. And, yeah. you know, follow, subdivision followed by another subdivision. But, you know, the other thing too is it's sort of order. These other ones have already been through and we had to push them to December because they weren't ready. State hospitals sort of late to the game, so it's easy enough to say, "Sorry, doc, it's full. You're going to have to go in January." Um, so we could do that. What are the chances that Kensington is not going to be ready? I don't know. I mean, I was surprised they would weren't going to be ready for tonight. I don't know what what delayed them. The original was supposed to be. September. They actually wanted to be on the second meeting in November until I told them it was Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So they were sort of caught in between the November, early November meeting. Yeah, I would say put them first since okay. I'd say neighbors are sure to be there. Right. Yeah. So we do them at 7 p.m. We push Hospital Hill off to the first meeting in January. Okay. And then we still handle the special permit and the site plan. Industrial Park. And yeah, of course. Are those complicated? I mean, we can see the permit. No. Yeah. Um, no. I mean, if we have everything ready to go, it should be, it should be very simple as well. Projects. And I know for the Florence one, it should be okay because we work with them. We said, you know, here are the issues. And they're so, well, it just remains to be seen that they address those. And that's for the park to be pretty simple, too. Kensington is going to take a while, especially if they don't do a plan. So that, that, that's, that's a three hour meeting. So 7 o'clock.
clock for Kensington then, and then I'll um, can work the other ones in. All right, so we want to make a motion in Kensington seven. Oh, Jenny, you raise your hand. Oh. <laughs> oh, we have to actually, oh. We have to, we, yeah. Like the whole. You have to move the continue. Uh, time to sure, I think to continue um, the continuation of Kensington Estates with the subdivision. Uh, to, I'm sorry, December 8th at 7 o'clock. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? All right. Brandy, I'm considering that a vote. <laughs> Um, all right, so Catherine's going to be here in a minute. Um, should we do the minutes? We have minutes from 9-8, 9-22, and 10-13. Can I compliment for the minutes? Yes. Oh, I thought about you, Brandon. Did not go on the way. She didn't think it nicely about you, but she thought. <laughs> <laughs> Devin already noted some um, amendments to the minutes, which I made on my digital copy, but I didn't have them for you. And now Good. I can't remember what they were. <laughs> they were just small. Yeah, there were sort of, um, typos and hanging Jared. Oh, well, uh, <laughs> hanging Chad. He's my transportation. <gasps> what happened? I broke my arm. Uh, oh, no. Oh, no. Right. Was what was the last night? Yes. You just can't stay away from <laughs> injury, <laughs> from well, bandaging. I have a big issue on why it happened. You know those darn angle parking things down Main Street? I was driving my bike right down Main Street with the traffic and somebody just backed out. Uh -huh. We need reverse angle. Yeah. 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 We need reverse angle. Go the other way. Yeah. I will you got hit by a car? I will, you know, appear yeah, in public office. meetings about the parking thing. Right. Those angle parking Wait, things. when did this happen? On Tuesday. I think I saw you biking on Tuesday. God, pretty. Must have been before. It was before. Because somebody came right out like that. I squeezed my brakes on so I wouldn't get cream. And I went right over the top. You went over the handle? Oh, oh, my God. Yeah. I landed on my elbow. Oh. That's my saga. So how long is that going to be? I don't really know. Maybe a month. Wow. So, hey, she's the poster child for reverse angle. Exactly. I am. Yeah, I will so testify. Take a picture now. So How do you sign checks? That's 
So you're there, see? But it was a long time that I was there, so I thought it was a long time. All right, so uh, Catherine, CPA. Yeah, CPA. Um, just to catch everybody up, we're on our second round for 2011. And uh, we had nine, I believe we had nine original expressions of interest, but only ultimately six um, um, applications. And as you, those of, I don't know how many of you were there last night, you were there, but if anyone else was there, you hear it. The process is that we the applications come in, we do written questions back and forth, and we do um, a meeting with public comment, um, actually two meetings with public comment to see how much support there is for the projects and what people's concerns and interests are. And then we do some preliminary recommendations. Um, and then the next meeting that we have is November 2nd, and we will have the whole meeting will be devoted to deciding what we're going to recommend. And then it goes to the council for two votes, because um, they always take two votes on these kinds of appropriations. So what I thought I could tell you would be what all six applications are and what they're asking for um, in relation to the total budget. because. One of the, um, the expectations in the CPA <coughs> plan for Northampton, and I think actually for a CPA throughout the state, is that there be um, some kind of matching grants that we're not paying for the whole thing. Um, and also, I wanted to tell you how much money is in the pot right now. Um, see, I've got that somewhere. Well, it's a, there's about close to $800,000 that is available um, right now, but what we usually try to do is not spend all of it because the new round that we'll be starting in January will be for applications that we will give funding to in um, May. And so we want to save some of the money that we now have in the pot for, um, for those applications. So we don't want to give away everything. Um, and we get the state matching funds every year in October. The money that comes in from the city from taxes is about $80,000 a month that goes into the fund. Um, but the big chunk comes in from the state in October. And so the, does that $800,000 include what you expect to get from the state? Yes, yes. That's the total that we'll have from now until next October in the state plus our monthly amounts that are coming in from the city. Um, so, um, You do the considerations how often? Twice a year? Two rounds a year. So you want to save half of the state money for the next? We'd like yeah. to. I mean, it's not never exactly precise how it gets parsed out. 10% uh, of what we give every year has to go to open space, 10% is dark and 10% um, to affordable housing. At least, uh, not. Minimum, right. minimum, yeah. So one of them could be 80%? Yeah, no, one of them couldn't be 80%. Why not? 80 well, yeah, I guess it could, yeah, yeah you're right. Then there'd be, but, but we also obviously want to have money for the fourth category, which is recreation. Okay, but there's no what, statutory Requirement. minimum on uh, minimum, yeah. So we have um, this, on this round, the, for, the, um, for recreation, the request for the application for Florence Fields is $2,261,300, um, which is the whole project. It's basically finishing the fields, creating a playground, and um, a um, little concession stand, bathrooms, that kind of thing. And the total budget for that project is two million two hundred sixty-one thousand three hundred, and um, we have already given Florence Fields other grants to that have taken care of design and kind of preliminary preparation of the area, of drainage kinds of things. But this is how much they want from now on to finish the project. <coughs> um, then. Uh, open space slash recreation, two applications. One is um, Mineral Hills, which where there are two um, 
areas of open space that will connect with two other pieces of land that are already protected. Um, and that request is for 302000 and the total budget there is seven eighty-seven thousand. Um, Who's that come from? I Make think there's state matching. No, who made the request? Oh, oh, the um, OPD. So can I just go back to Florence Field for a minute? Yeah. They're they're requesting the the entire amount, but they yeah. have um, a state grant pending. There's a park grant. Uh huh. I'm not sure. What is park? P A R C. What is that acronym? Stand for? Um. I think it's parks and recreation <laughs> something. Mission, yeah. Yeah. So there's a potential five hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollar grant that could come from them for that. So um, is there a thought to make the um, approval contingent upon them receiving that, or if not receiving yeah. that, applying for something yeah, else? Yeah, definitely be contingent on the right. part. Right. Because otherwise it would be a hundred percent contribution right. from the CPA. Right. Yeah. What about uh, the rec department? As far as I know, hasn't tried to make, raise any money for this on their own. Have you guys talked to them that you would do it rather than give it to them all, that you would do a matching, like make them match? Well, we've, we've talked about that, yeah. And what did this say? Like extensive conversations about that, where their view is that the, um, the families who are so involved in recreation really put a huge amount in anyway, in terms of fees and uniforms and all the things that they pay to get the kids on. Yeah. And so they're at, they don't, they say we can have um, car washes and, and we can have bake sales, but we can't raise this kind of money. So. And what was the reaction of the board, the CPA? The, our our group. Um, well, we haven't yet pronounced on it. We no, no. What did you say to the rec department? Did you say you, you would like them to do some fundraising? Yeah, we said we really would like them. So when you mean fundraising, you mean not getting, not leveraging other money from other grants, but actually doing direct fundraising themselves? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, why not? I mean, there's uh, how much I fundraising these grow food don't they have to do? Right. You know, when they came to buy it, how much fundraising do right. other projects in town do to get matching funds from the CPA? I, I think for the rec department to come and ask for $2.2 million and, and not have anything that they're offering, I think it's is unfair to all the other groups. Apart from if, if they get the 500000 Even if they get the 500000 that will drop their what their request is to 1.7. Right. After they've already gotten, what, $500,000 from the CPA for the Dean and Ellen Farm? No, but that 500000 was for the acquisition. For the acquisition, too, right. And it included the farmland. Right, it, but, but, the, it's not but the money for the correct. design as well. But the so design something. for the recreation fields, I would say it was 280 something like that. Do you remember? 250 I think. Right. What they got for... The preliminary, you know, laying the thing out. <laughs> well, as I understand it, almost half a million dollars is for, oh, sorry, is for a playground, which feels like maybe an accessory to the field. Well, no, it's not quite that much. Well, it's, yeah, the playground, play equipment, play surface, play sign, the picnic pavilion, site furnishings, that all comes to 401. So no fundraising for that. I mean, the thing is that nobody on the, on the CPC yet has clearly said, this is what I think we should do. I know that some people think um, they should get it all because it's hugely popular in the recreation community, and others think they need to raise at least a part of it. Other people think um, that we might fund uh, the fields and not the playground. You know, there, there's a lot of discussion that still has to happen, which will probably happen on Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday. But you're voting on Wednesday. November 2nd. We Wednesday. will make a recommendation. Yeah. Yeah. However long that meeting yeah. goes on, that will be our discussion meeting. Well, my question was about the choices, and I hadn't heard anybody talk about a phased approach, and considering what we've gone through with the soccer fields, yeah. I was wondering that, you know, if Someone ought to be talking about we could we could do this piece and start it. Yeah, we talked with that. They had someone from Berkshire Design there at our last meeting, and um, he said that um, it's much more expensive to do it that way. That really they need to do all the drainage and all the layout of the fields in one fell swoop because you'll save a lot of money in the long run rather than doing two lacrosse fields and then two baseball diamonds. And, okay. You could do it. Well, and they're going to have to do parking for anything. There's parking. Uh, 
Yeah. But there might be a way, I mean, if you're talking about fields versus the concession and the, and the playground, and the playground, playground yeah. those yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, right. that's kind of a direction that, yeah, what, what are you thinking? No. Are you just as soon as you're done, as soon as you're done with your sentence. I just want to tell you what Park stood for. Oh, what? Oh. Oh. It's not Park with a K. It's PS. Parkland Acquisitions and Renovations for Communities. Okay, that sounds good. Right? It assists citizen towns in acquiring and developing land for park and outdoor recreation. They won't, uh, the city will not receive that park grant unless it's a state grant. The, the, the CPA money is a sort of first in money. It's a, it's a commitment to um, get get the process going. And in that case, then it's contingent. We're contingent on giving it on the park grant coming through. The park grant is also somewhat contingent on seeing how much the community cares. But on the other hand, there are issues about other kinds of fundraising, like say the Lacrosse Association of America or the Little League, you know, National Little League something applying to them and one of our issues is that if we if we uh, recommend 2.2 2 million um, why would anybody else give right. anything because right. they have it all right it's not a whole lot of right 2.2 2 million is all the money for the cpa for three years well now what it's, it's bonding right but then you'd be locked into paying you know a certain amount for 10 years could be years but, right. years right. and years and years right. Right. and I, I i struggle with the fact that the rec department is doing little or no fundraising with yeah. everybody else in town who has to money from the CPA right. has to go out and do a lot of fundraising. Mm -hmm. And the fact, you know, to say that, you know, their 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 people are tapped out who do it. Well there's lots of people that kids who, who did it twenty years ago. Right, right. You know, it's like the Y or the the library or yeah. food. I mean it's like people like me. I mean I would make a contribution even though I don't have kids who are playing soccer. Right. So I I really struggle with the yeah. coming to the CPA. I don't think it's I think it's a narrow view and I think there's Having to raise something is really an important part of the CPA grant. Yeah, so. I think it's a very important part. So that's the position that I take. You know, it's useful for me to hear what the planning board thinks on these things because um, although I'm not, uh, I mean, I, I come from this committee, but everyone on the CPC tries to think about what's what's best for the whole community and um, not just represent your own little constituency. Not everybody? <laughs> yeah. Not everybody. Yeah. So that's I don't our goal. Everybody in the CPA quite has that same. Our goal is to have a culture in which right. people see the wider needs of the community and not just their own little lands. I appreciate that. Yeah. So that's what we're that's what we're gonna be talking about. That's gonna be a big right. one. I think Oh sorry. I wanted to tell you the other ones because there's also there's oh, other... Do oh. you have a question on the, the Well I was just gonna say relative to the to the fields, the biggest issue for years with the Oxwell and everything in the fields, 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 we need the fields, but not so much the playground, you know, equipment. So that, to me, that's an easy thing to break up. Mm -hmm. It's a good chunk, 400000 It's not specific to the initial needs of the city being the play fields. Right. So, you know, fund the play fields, you're on your own, you know, raise some money for the playground and make an effort and do something like that. So I think that that's what a number of us are thinking on the committee, although I can't speak for other people right now, but I think um, when we raised that with this Berkshire design guy, of course he wants to do the whole package and he shows us pictures of things he's done for Agawam and Chicopee and other play various fields and he said people like to have a playground because they take an older child to play soccer and the little kids can play on the, the jungle gym. So that the philosophy is people like it better, and it also becomes sort of a community center for picnics, and people come on the weekends. And, and he's yeah. right, and but that would be that would look, look park. That's that'd be something to shoot for when you say, hey, we've got these fields, but look yeah. what we could have. I and as far as the prep, the site work initially, exactly. he's right with the grading and everything yeah. in, the, in the substrate and all that stuff. So but you do all that once and still prep for a future playground over right, here in the right. corner. Whether it's now or a year from now. You don't have to build it now. I mean, no. I, that would no. be my view of it. You have to build all the underground and get ready to receive mm -hmm. it at some time in the future. Right. But then you can fundraise, and that would, to me, that would be, hey, my, you know. You could fundraise off all the people who brought their kids to soccer. Right. 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 Soccer, right. they saw them across and say, look, but see, we they want say we're paying for these expensive uniforms and these. Well, uh, they don't have to. Right. And that's, you know, that's, that's not an argument. I mean, that's like grow food. They're, they're, they're already buying their food. Oh, yeah. 
but they right. still gave money still to grow food in Northampton. Right. So. Well, let me tell you the other ones, and then the, the, I miss, you, you got to the open space at Mineral Hills, but you said there were two. Yeah, the other one is um, sort of open space slash recreation. It's an extension of the bike trail along the Connecticut River up to the Hatfield um, town line. It's called the Connecticut River Greenway. And the amount requested is 200000 The total budget is 8225000 Did you guys reject that at the last one? Uh-huh. What? Because uh, compared to some of the other things, we just thought it was too big. And there were a whole lot of permits that had to be gotten. And it was not as clear as um, And this time? This time, it's a little bit less uh, complex. There's going to be a boathouse down here, I think. That, um, Smith College is behind, yeah. and that there are more permits that are kind of in place for it. It's still a lot of money, and what it, it's all for design, because um, it, the idea, is, as Wayne explained it, is this is to have the, this shovel ready, get into the queue for the federal money, which would be the um, this is the eight million, which would actually make the whole thing happen right along. So potentially the 200000 from CPA could bring the $8 million Would put it in the queue. To complete the whole project. Although it'll be a number of years before it would show, sure, actually. Yeah. That seems like a really fantastic deal. It's a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful area along the river. And it's, yeah. so you leverage, 200000 leverages $8 million. Sounds like, yeah, no yeah, that's, to that's, me. That's, that's the way it should be. Yeah. Right. So that's, that's my number right now. Yeah. 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 And, and the Mineral Hills also is leveraging quite a lot. It's le leveraging kind of a, a double match from 302,000 to 787, which comes, I believe, is that from state money, do you know, Carol? Um, for that one, the open space. I, yeah, I don't know if it's um, partially state and federal. I don't know the details of no. that one. I think Sarah did the green. So. Right. Um, the other, there's one other open space, which is a contribution to something called the Conservation Fund, asking for 100,000, total budget 300,000. And the Conservation Fund is money that's available for OPD when opportunities come along to get um, land or to do some of the soft costs to get the permits and make, um, make the project happen. Um, and we have generally given not a hundred thousand, but we've given some something to that. Each, usually like each fifty, round. fifty, sixty. I mean, Wayne always puts that in because it's kind of like an endowment, you know, right? That we contribute. Puts it in the capital improvements area. I think there are other funds. There's a historic preservation fund as well. In historic preservation, in that category, the Academy of Music. Is asking for two hundred seventy-five thousand out of a total budget of five eighty-one. What did they want money for this time? <laughs> they need a new roof. Um, Bless him. Uh, yeah. Just have a new roof ten years ago. No, this is for the back. Thirty years or something like that. It's, it's the front part. It's apparently pretty bad. It's, it's the part bad. over the. Did they sell the marquee yeah. in Boston? Here's, yeah. here's what they want. <laughs> the marquee we, came up at the CPA like meeting the last night. Oh really? Yeah, yeah the planning board. It was our call that, that would not a non-scrolling marquee. And I wanted to raise my hand and say, that wasn't our call, it's a zoning call. Yeah. We didn't have anything to do that, did we? So anyway. Uh, they said we were the ones who pulled here's what the marquee. Here's what the Academy of Music is asking oh, for. Interior and exterior historic renovations, repaint the walls and ceiling of the auditorium and balcony. And if you've been there or if you've seen pictures of it, it's all kind of crumbling because the roof has been wet and it's been leaking down, so it's a mess. In order to do that, they're going to remove all the old auditorium seats and install new seats wow. and replace the existing stage house roof to stop the leaks on the stage. Additional work um, would be painting the ceiling of the auditorium and installing new ceiling lights, but that's not in this, in this project. So there are a lot of people who came for that one, too. Um, now, have they done fundraising or matching? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they do a lot of fundraising. What are the numbers on that? They want 200 and what? They asked for 275 out of a budget for 581 935. And um, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people were there at our last meeting, over 50 people who were there to 
say, please give us the, the Florent the Beals. I would say that the Academy of Music probably had 20 people there who said, my child loves the theater program and it supplements what they get in school. And so it's a lot of, nothing like the, the feels, but there's certainly a lot of people there. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of grinned when you said they needed a new roof and the first thing that comes up is all new seats. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just reading the list up here. I think the, the I have their, their budget here if you want it. The, um, how much the seats would cost, how much the roof would cost. It's not the whole thing. It's not a whole roof. Is there some question of whether historical preservation can include interior as opposed to just exterior, right? Because you're not almost certain the whole community is not accessing the interior? No, it, it, it can. It can. It can. It can. It can. Yeah. Um, then the last one is um, Beaverbrook Bridge, which I don't know if you're familiar with where that is. It's on the bike path uh, from Leeds toward Pagendall, and there's an old bridge there um, that um, has a few cracks in it. Is that the rock one? Yes. It's a beautiful old stone bridge. Um, it's on the bike path. In order to have a good, solid bike path, Really breaks and bones there. Yeah. Can you, is it not safe to take a bike over? No, 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 you can take it. It's, you just can't drive a train over it. There's an old train, or you can't drive a car over it. But it's a big stone arch bridge. It's old and. Is it the one the DPW has on the list to fix anyway? Probably. I don't know. So why, why would the citizens have to request that the DPW was going to fix it? This says, this is restoration of the Norwatic Mass Central Rail Trail Arch Bridge over Beaverbrook. The bridge was constructed in the early 1900s. It's not been maintained since the 1970s. It's in need of repair and rehabilitation to maintain its integrity and ensure that it's safe for pedestrians and bicyclists and ensure that this historic structure remains for future generations. And they are asking for $104,000 out of a total budget of 111,000. So they're asking for 93%. Carolyn, so this is, the DPW wouldn't do the work on this bridge? Because it's part of the bike path? I thought this is the bridge that was closed. There was a, the no, bridge. you're thinking of the hotel bridge. That's the, yeah. That's Not the, the hotel bridge, no. no. That's I think the okay, it's in the, the woods. Bridge. That one we did fund um, the last round. So wait, who's bringing this one forward? Wayne brought four projects forward. And then there was Florence Fields and the Academy of Modern. Mm -hmm. And no affordable housing stuff this time around? No. I thought you did 10% for affordable housing. Or 10% the year. For a year. So you've done it 10% for this year already. Uh, the numbers, I'll have to add Well, that's for the stuff on King Street, I imagine. King Street, and then there was a there's a sober housing project on um, Maple Street. Right. The other Oh yeah, that last night. It's another Yvonne house. Right. Yeah. And so there are um, without Florence Fields, there are requests for something like um, nine hundred thousand dollars worth of projects. So we're obviously going to have to make yeah nine hundred eighty one thousand for the five applications not including Florence Field. So we will obviously have to you know talk through, prioritize, um, figure out you know what where we can give and what we'll have to bond. If we do give, we obviously can't give all of this. We don't have enough money in the pot. Did you guys do some bond funding for, was it Forbes Library? Library. How much was that? 500,000 So it's like 50 a year for 10 years? Something like that, yeah. So you guys already, so Florence Field saved it a whole 2.2 million. Bond funded, it would be 220 a year for 10 years. It could take a while. We well, usually get bond funded for 10 yeah. years. Yeah. So, and then, you know, the interest rates are low enough. So it'd be maybe it 250 a year. For ten years, so between that and Forbes Library, you're talking three hundred thousand dollars off the table for the next ten yeah. years. Forbes is almost done. Forbes is almost paid off. So maybe they did a five-year on that one. Yeah. 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 
the idea as well is that right now with the time we want to fund it, that helps in the future. Oh, no, I completely. But I, in I terms of how big the basic pot is, I mean, there is legislation in Boston going on right now to propose um, other sources for matching funds so that they could raise their match to 75%. Maybe from the big new gambling, the gaming bill, people with their licenses, some of that money would go to uh, CPA grants, the CPA fund. Because um, right now you're looking at 33%. Yeah. And then there's um, the idea that some of the, the real estate transaction fees would go up a bit because they haven't been raised in 10 years. And that would increase the, the fund as well. But, you know, that, that hasn't gone through yet. But the hope is that it will before the legislature goes home for Christmas. But anyway, all of this is happening, as you all know, in the context of the um, ballot question on November 8th, which is saying repeal the CPA. Vote no on one. Right? Yeah. The ballot question, is it binding, or is it just... <coughs> have voted to bond fund something, you have to, con the city continues to collect the money. The city will have to continue, um, but there will be no new projects. They'll have to continue to pay off the bonding. Now I'm a little more interested in bond funding. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Interest rates at 3% and, and, and risking the possibility of losing the program. So there's a lot, it's pretty, in, it's in a very intense time for the CPC uh, to try to make good choices. You know, we don't want to you know, there's a lot of voters out there. There are people who are saying, you know, if you don't, we don't get these, you know, soccer fields, we're going to vote against the CPA. And people feel they're not um, being listened to. They're not getting what they, they're saying, what does the Academy of Music do for me? I want soccer fields. So, you know, people become these sort of single issue voters. And so it, it raises concerns for us. We have to be terribly careful that we're really serving the whole community in these decisions and do it as res <clears throat> responsibly as we can. Well, it came up last night at the, the meeting. Did you guys talk about postponing collective elections? Somebody raised that. Somebody asked me that. It came okay. up last, yeah, last night, too. Yeah. One of the candidates. Did one of the candidates say? Yeah. Okay. So you guys, um, Warren? So you guys didn't talk about that in the CPA, about, about delaying this vote till after the election? Well, we, we had some discussion about that. The question is, should we be intimidated by people's threats? Um, well, the real question is, if you listen but you disagree, does that mean you haven't listened? Or does it just mean you disagree? Right. And then if you listen to those who say, I want fields, and, and those who say, I want Theater. I mean, we're not going to be able to please everybody. Right, right. and I, you know, I, as much as I mean, they can stop listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah they definitely listen. And you did, right? mm -hmm. for sure. There's well, long, long public comment. Mm -hmm. Although I did stop the cheering, the children, you know, oh God, cheering, oh God. <laughs> so that was not appropriate. But anyway, so what do you all think? Do you think we should postpone the meeting? Possibility. It's a possibility. It's been raised. I mean, you guys could bring the, you know, could have a discussion at the next meeting and say, look. We're not ready for the summer. We're not ready. There's too much uncertainty. Let's wait till the ballot can the question's over. Uh, wow. That's people that might look like we don't think it's going to happen. That's true. I'm I just throwing it out there, but, you know, it's. Well, what do you, how do you think people would react to that? I mean, should we just go ahead? This is, we're doing our best, as we always do. We're transparent. That's right. Sure. Or should we say it's too dicey? Let's wait. Is there a statutory requirement to have a meeting decide by a certain time? Well, we have by a certain date. We have to get um, the recommendations to the council. I think that's uh, later in November. We could wait. Do they have to act on before the January first? Because there'll be a new yes. council. Yes. Yes. They have two votes in November. December. Oh, and that's probably going to dictate your time anyway, because they can't. I mean, they'll have new council. January. No, no, no. They, this council will decide. <coughs> right, but I'm saying if you put it off till the end of November, it really pushes, because they have two meetings in December only, and I mean, they could take both readings. I think you should just go ahead and have a meeting. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah.
feels really superficially strategic to do that in right. not a good way. Right. I yeah. totally understand why you would want to, but but it was funny that it came up great. in the meeting last night. Yeah. One of the candidates said, "You know, this is almost the wrong time to be making decisions of the CPA before the election." Right. Yeah. yeah, but she doesn't have a, a fondness for the CPA anyway. It appears. Right. Well, we have a long time. Good. <laughs> Just be sure yeah. everybody votes no on valid question. Yeah, no, I mean, it's definitely a dicey time, and, and there's people on the committee feel pressure to, um, you know, how do we please everybody? We can't please everybody. There's not enough money in the pot. Just because we do doesn't mean all the time. Just because the planning board pleases everyone, right. Well, then, you know, it, 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 under observation, it looks like you're listening to everyone, but it's whoever rallies the most people to come to a meeting. It's yeah. not necessarily, it's not a, 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 a well, that was question. It's, 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 and that was my, that was when, you know, this was, uh, I'll be honest with you, I struggled with you coming to us today, the week before you're voting, because last time when you came to us, Jen, Devin, and I all came to your meeting, mm -hmm. and we were too late. And now, you're telling us now, your public comment session is over, and so it's too late for us, as the planning board, almost to weigh in, just like it was last time. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I, I really wish you would come to us a month ago when there was still time for us to publicly comment, because now there's not. So if we showed up at the meeting on Wednesday, just like when we all showed up at the meeting last time, and Fran very... Fran said we did not exist. We did not. You, you, you missed your window of giving public comment. So I really wish you would come a month ago to us, because this is a lot for us to digest tonight. Yeah, you're right. The public comment period is over, and, and I agree with Devin. I think sometimes what the CPA does, it's a popularity contest, and you had 50 people for the rec department for the field, and you had 20 for the academy music, therefore, well, it seems like there's more public support for the, for the fields, and I think that's yeah. incredibly and one of the least democratic. Yeah, I, I, really, I really struggled with that. And a handful of people who came for the open space project. Yeah, and I... I it's just a process. I mean, it feels like the same thing in transportation parking. I mean, you know, the people who are motivated to come out for something come out and have their say, but it's no indication of how, what the solution or the neighborhood really thinks. It's the same here. Yeah. yeah. Well, it is, yeah. It's yeah, the same ultimately, thing. You're, yeah. you're thrown back on your own best wisdom as a committee to try to respond in a balanced way. I mean, as you said, or someone said, you listen, you hear them, it's important. I mean, one of the things I said is, if what you want to say has already been said, don't say it. Just clap if you agree with somebody. So the, the, the people who spoke were all saying, you know, relatively similar but slightly different things about, you know, how great sports are for their children and all that. So we know that. And then as a committee, we um, have to just step back from the, all the intensity of that and say, what, what do we really think? is best for this community, and where, is, where are the balances? And um, no, I think you're right, <coughs> Stephen. I think that, um, you know, in and around in the next year, that it, you know, it'll be important to, I'm assuming it passes, it doesn't get repealed, but it'd be important for me to kind of put it on the agenda to. I do too, because I, I, when, when I found out that the meeting was next, I always coincidentally sent you an email last week saying, hey, let's talk about oh, this. Yeah. And, you hadn't brought any of this stuff to us, yeah. and you're voting next week on something that when you guys voted last time, and I, I still remember the night we were there. Three of us from the no, planning board are there, and the only thing we were told by CPA, oh, you're too late. Mm -hmm. And but now you're coming to us, and it's almost too late. When, when did you get the uh, all the applications? Uh, uh, August. And we, <clears throat> we accepted six out of the nine that were eligible. So that's when we began to get the full information questions back and forth on it, and then the public meetings began in October. So it's a, you know, it's a three or four month, four month process. And what will happen, the public meetings for the next round will be in probably in March. We'll get the applications in January. Put that on your calendar, too. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I, I mean, uh, if I hadn't had sent you that email last week, were you going to talk to us about this at all? Well, I should. I certainly should. Yeah, I think it's important because yeah. you know you're our representative to this committee. Right, we right. appointed you to represent us, mm -hmm. 
and I'm glad you're taking the global perspective on it, but I think it's important for you to hear from us as to yeah. what we're, our thoughts are. And I, I struggle with the rec department coming to you, even if they could pack an audience with lots of kids and lots of parents who are going to bring uniforms. you. Soccer uniforms? Yeah, they have their soccer uniforms on. I mean, we've had this with the Oxbow, we've had it all the time. And I really think they have to be bringing a lot more to the table. Yeah. And I want the fields down there. My kids play. I coached in the rec department. I coached 10 sports for them. But I think it's really important that they bring something to the table. And I really think it's important for the CPA to make it very clear to them that they have to be doing more. And I really I struggle with the fact that you guys might put yourself in a position of bond funding for 10 years, something that's going to cost probably a third of your budget. And that's, that's a big chunk of change. I, 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 I really think they have to do more. I think I agree with Mark in terms of phasing it. I think it can be phased. I think, yeah, it might cost a little bit more in the long run, but something like that can be phased over a long period. And it really stands out as the one project where they're, they're contributing so, such a tiny, tiny percentage right. relative to right. the other ones. Right. Right. Some are you know, 50 to 1 to the bike trail or 40 to 1 to the bike trail and mm -hmm. nothing from the rent mm -hmm. If if the CPA had never been passed, what would the rec department do? I mean, it's kind of, there. Yeah. there is funding for lots of projects. This is sort of like for things that wouldn't normally be able to get done. I mean, it might be an override like the police station. It's going to be exactly like Capital the police. Or they go to capital improvements. Yeah. Capital improvements funds the rec department for fields. That's part of what the capital improvements. But there's a lot of competition for all of those sources. And, sure. You know, you have to, have to say for the, I mean, maybe, I can't say I know all the grant funding sources, but recreation is probably, has probably the least number of sources for grant funds that I know of. I mean, maybe there's some hidden things in there that, you know, like you said, Little League Foundation of America. No, no, no. But, um, the soccer. But, you know, whereas <coughs> affordable housing, you know, you've got block grant, you've got other sort of federal and state well, monies that come in. Yeah. And yeah. historic, historical stuff in the open spaces mm -hmm. and all that being said, I think, well, I agree with the, I very much agree that the, the rec department should do something, you know, to, to raise funding, and that it's, it's totally skewed what they're look, looking for. From a, just politics and everything aside, from a strictly planning board point of view, there's an obvious need for fields, and that, that's been coming through for three years. So I think the need is, it's been demonstrated, so I think the fund, my, and means the funding should demonstrate that. And from a planning sense, that the bike trail to Hatfield, that seems like just a no-brainer. That's an easy one. The conservation fund, again, from a planning sense, we've been doing that, or the CPA's been doing that. It would make sense to continue doing that because that's the planning board relies on that and needs that. Not, and so I would prioritize maybe those above the others and then, you know, depending on how you break out the funding. But I, I still, out of all of these, I think from a planning board need, the fields have the highest need. I, I, I completely agree. That I think the fields do. <clears throat> I'm not sure about a play structure or I, other parts, I, I would but agree. I think the fields do too. And I still I have, you know, whether or not it will work, but I still think Vets Field is a viable option for those fields in the short term as well. And I don't think the rec department, at least from the inquiries I've made, they haven't responded to the possibility of using Vets Field for, for stuff. So I think, but I do agree that, that the, um, the fields are on my completely okay with that, but not 100% funding. No, I uh, agree 100%. Well, it would be interesting to know, I mean, it could be the strategy to ask for everything and, it not, and clearly not expect. Well, that's yeah, what happens in capital right. improvements. People do that all the time. So capital improvements, yeah. every department from the city comes to capital improvements sure. and asks for everything. Why wouldn't you, really? And then yeah. The, the goal of the Capital Improvements Committee is to, to figure out and prioritize right, and make recommendations away. to the City Council, just like the CPA, right. and the City Council makes the ultimate decision. They make the ultimate, yeah. But, um, but I think it's, a, you know. Well, we certainly don't want to recommend things that are going to burden the city for decades, you know, in terms of this bonding process. You know, that's doesn't seem, I mean, but we obviously are going to have to do some bonding this time because there's so many good applications. Is it? Does, this, does a set look like it usually does? I mean, I'm thinking like when you fix the Lily Library, that's a, you know, that was a, a small ticket item. Were there any smaller items that could be, these are all surprisingly large. They're all big, no little ones. 
Yeah, there was something about putting signs on trees that was $5,000 or something. Lily Library, those windows were 13. Yeah, but there's nothing like that. This time is that time. because the application process is too onerous or people don't think about it? I don't know. Yeah. It would be nice if there were some smaller. Yeah, that's something that's very satisfying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Little goodies that you wouldn't. You know, well, I think it would show a mix of interest in different. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the candidates, there are four candidates who are running to be on. There are two voting positions there, and four people running for two slots. And a lot of them were saying they want more outreach and different kinds of applications. But in fact, the CPC. Um, receives applications. We don't. We don't have. We don't go out and say, "Why don't you apply to us?" We haven't done that, and maybe we should. It's not part of our operating procedure at this point to get more variety. Some people are, say there haven't been enough um, grants given to wards six and seven. But when you look at the map, you know you see so grants all over the place. A lot of people who signed the repeal of CPA. It's not, it's not done. Well, I'm thinking even um, yeah. because, because I'm oh, the Senate, oh, that was hard work. we just <clears throat> gave throat> the architect $40,000 to survey First Churches to see if it can be viable in the long-term reuse. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. It never occurred to me that might have been a CPA, a CPC. It could have been, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so they got money before too. Mm -hmm. so they got money yeah. for their roof and their ceiling. Yeah, yeah. 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 right, because it's a meeting house, right? That's Even right. though there was objections because of the separation of church and state, yeah. mm -hmm. some people thought it was not a good thing to do to the church. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any other comments? <clears throat> Thank you for your input. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, I think putting it on the agenda for the, for the planning board. Um, in early in the public comment period. So can you let Steve on that know and Carolyn know when that is? So it's on. Yeah, it's all public but I don't know. Uh, anything else? Sure. Motion, something? Uh, 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 Good luck with your elbow, Catherine.